Hi, many of you asked us how is it possible to bring meat cattle travel all over Japan? So we're gonna show you how we do it. First of all, we want to show you all the stuff we need to bring when we travel with Mika. We have her carrier, of course, to transfer her from place to place. And there's a very really cool design on this carrier, which is like, uh, if you open the zipper here, it can become bigger, and then she can enjoy more space to stay. And then we have a bottle of water and a portable water bowl to just uh, keep her hydrated at any time. Then we have her food, her main food, and her treats, her snacks. We have some wet wipes to clean her feet and hands, especially during the COVID-19. We need to be careful. Then we have her leash. And most importantly, we have the poo bags, just in case she put anywhere. And finally, we have her insurance card. We usually bring it just in case something will happen. And that's it. In Japan, you can't just bring your dogs directly onto the train like many other parts of the world but instead, you need to put them in a carrier. Luckily, Mika is small enough, and so she can actually fit on a carrier that they allow. There's definitely people with much larger pets, larger dogs, that I think, unfortunately, are not able to go on the train since they're so large. And so if you're bringing a dog, or any pet for that matter, with you, as you go through the gates, you'll want to go to where the attendants are. And to actually bring your pet with you, you'll need to pay a small fee. For example, for the JR trains, you need to pay a 290 yen fee. And once you pay the fee, They'll put a little tag on your carrier to indicate that you paid this fee and so if other attendants see with your pet, they'll know you paid this fee and don't need to pay again. And since the trains in Japan can take you to pretty much anywhere, that also means we can take Mika to pretty much anywhere. So it's definitely very nice that for the transportation aspect, we don't really need to think about whether we can bring Mika or not because the answer is often yes. As long as the train can get us there, we can take a dog with us there. Mika's also super well behaved, and so we can go on super long trips, you know, a couple hours at a time, and she can be in her carrier and won't make a fuss at all. And maybe this is because she's been on a lot of trains now and it's kind of used to it. But it definitely makes it a lot easier to travel with her, as opposed to maybe like a yappier dog that's just barking the whole time and kind of causing a scene for everyone around you. So oftentimes we can travel with her in the cage and no one will even notice her carrying a dog just because she's completely quiet and silent the entire time. If you have a driver's license here in Japan, another option is to take the car. So we actually don't take the car that often because the trains are just so convenient. But every now and then we do, like this trip when we were in Fukui, when all the places are super scattered around. However, if you have a larger dog and the dog is not allowed on the train, then driving around may be your only option to get from place to place. We usually don't bring Mika to a road trip because she easily got car sick and then she always easy to puke in the car. And that's why we need a good driver. Ta-da! <laughs> so in my opinion, one of the biggest challenges of traveling with a dog is actually finding a place to stay at. So in larger cities, like in Kyoto, there's a lot of options, and so you can usually find a pretty reasonable place to stay at. But for example, for this trip, which is you know a little bit further out, a little bit more in the countryside, there's not a lot of great options, and the place we end up having to book is about an hour away from some of the attractions we want to go to. So personally, I'm a huge fan of using Airbnb or Booking.com to find a place to stay at, especially when traveling with a dog. Both of those sites have filters that allow you to narrow down the places to dog-friendly places and so that's super important. I've also found it nice to generally message the hosts ahead of time if you are bringing a dog. Most of the time there's no problem and you know they're like great awesome we'd love to have you. Sometimes there's a small fee. In a few rare cases when traveling with Mika and a dog I've had the hosts tell me that they actually don't allow dogs or there's some extra conditions that kind of changes the book situation. <laughs> Lastly, if you can't find any dog-friendly places that are willing to accommodate you and your furry companion, my recommendation is actually to reach out to some of the hosts and see if they're willing to change some of their policies. Sometimes the hosts say they don't allow pets on their listing, but if you reach out to them, they may be willing to compromise. For example, our trip to Niseko, that lodge actually didn't normally allow dogs, but we reached out to them and, you know, especially this year, since they probably had a lot fewer customers than they normally do, they were willing to accommodate us 
and allow us to bring a dog in exchange for a deposit, which we end up getting the whole deposit back. And so if you can't find a dog friendly place for a place you wanna to go to right off the bat, don't give up because there may still be a place that is willing to accommodate you and your furry companion. And we pass by many restaurants and then they're all nice, so nice, and then say, pass is okay. They try to appeal us. So there's many places that you can't take dogs to while traveling, but one place that always works pretty well is taking dogs to outdoor areas. And it's always a pleasant surprise when these outdoor areas also have many dog-friendly places. So we weren't definitely planning on eating here in Tojimbo and mostly just kind of hoping to take the dogs out here for a nice little walk. But it was a pleasant surprise to see all these restaurants being dog-friendly. And so given that, we may stop by one of these restaurants afterward for a quick lunch. So with all that being said, traveling around with a dog is definitely logistically more challenging than without a dog. However, in my opinion, it is so worth it to be traveling around with one of your best friends. So we hope you guys found this video helpful, especially those of you guys with dogs and are thinking about traveling with them. And with that being said, we'll see you guys in the next one.